Hello, this is Vanessa with the latest episode of Asia News. China and Indonesia maintain communication in maritime issues. The spokesman of China's foreign minister Wang Wenbi in the news briefing says one of China's vessels are patrolling normally in waters under its jurisdiction in response to Indonesia reporting that a Chinese coast guard vessel entered its exclusive economic zone and China's rights and interests in relevant waters are clear. He adds the two sides have communicated about the issue. To my knowledge, China has as far as I know, Chinese Coast Guard ships have been performing normal patrol missions in water under Chinese jurisdiction. China and Indonesia have also maintained dialogue and communication on related maritime issues. The vessels enters Indonesia's 200-mile exclusive economic zone of the northern Natuna Island and left the country after radio challenges over jurisdiction. An Kurnia, chief of the Maritime Security Agency, Bakamla, tells to Reuters. Under international law, innocent passage is permitted through another country's exclusive economic zone, but An says the vessel are lingering too long. Drone footage shows Indonesia's cemetery expanding due to coronavirus deaths. According to local media, a graveyard in East Jakarta, designated as a burial ground for coronavirus victims, are expanded to accommodate the rising number of deaths caused by COVID-19 in the city. Drone footage shows land being prepared and coffins being low into the ground at Pondok Rangung Cemetery. Local reports say the government plans to extend the area about 6,500 square meters as the number of graves require heat 30 to 40 per day compared to the 10 daily in the past. Data from the country's health ministry show Indonesia reports 3,635 new cases of coronavirus infections with 122 new deaths. Chinese border city began COVID-19 mass testing after new cases from Myanmar. Southwest China Ruili City, located on the border of Myanmar, launched a free mass nucleic acid testing campaign for all residents after two stowaways from Myanmar test positive in the city. Local authorities say the two Myanmar citizens who entered Ruili City illegally be quarantined and hospitalized and they will face questions later about their illegal entry into the country. And 190 people close contacts are isolated and tested, but no new cases have detected. Strict management measures put in place in a border city. Many businesses temporarily close, except for supermarkets, pharmacies and farm produce markets. No vehicles are allowed on the roads, except those designated to transport daily necessities for residents. Large gatherings, include wedding banquets, are also not allowed for the time. Yunnan province asked all its 25 counties bordering Myanmar, Vietnam and Laos to work towards preventing more imported cases. Indian says no force can stop army from patrolling in Ladakh. Indian Defense Minister Rajnath Singh tells Indian's parliament that no force in the world can stop Indian soldiers from patrolling in Ladakh as the face of Chinese troops along the dispute border of the western Himalaya region continues. I want to make it clear that the face-off is happening because of this patrolling. And when it comes to the patrolling pattern, Honorable Chairman, I want to say that it is a tradition and it's also well defined. No force in the world can stop Indian soldiers from patrolling in Ladakh. Our soldiers have made sacrifices because of this only. We will not back down from taking any big and tough steps in the interests of our country. <laughs> Troops of both countries are locked in their most serious confrontation in years along the line of actual control or informal border, raising fears of a broader conflict. Bilateral relations are unusually tense since a clash at the dispute border area that kills 20 Indian soldiers. Drone footage showed 10,000 ducks cleaning rice paddies in Thailand. Drone footage shows around 10,000 ducks is released from a pen and instinctively streamed towards the flood fields to devour pets such as snails hiding in rice stubble after the rice crop is harvested on a farm in Nakhon Patom province. The khaki camel ducks, a British breed, are brought to rice fields after 20 days in nursery and will race on the move for the next few months. After roaming for free about five months, they are returned to the duck farm to produce eggs for up to three years. 
The benefit for a breeder is that we reduce cost to feed the ducks. We don't need to feed them until they are grown up. And in return for the rice farmers, the ducks helps eliminate pests for farmers and the farmers can reduce the use of chemicals and pesticide. During their field cleaning job that he expected to last a week in this 15 acre or 67 hectares farm, Apiwat's ducks are find plenty of food such as cherry snails, weeds and other small pests. They help eat golden apple snails and remains of unwanted rice hucks that remain in the field from the last harvest. The ducks are also step on the rice towel to flatten the ground and that makes that easier to plow. Yes, I'm concerned. If it's widespread of drought, then we cannot grow rice here, even though there is always enough water in this area. Farmer says the system works well for both the duck keeper and the rice grower. But even though there has not been a drought in the Nakom Patom, they are worried about this possible threat. Thailand is the world's second biggest rice exporter, has been facing a prolonged drought affecting many farming areas this year. Malaysian man finds video and photos seemingly shot by monkey in his phones. A Malaysian man discovers video and selfies seemingly taken by a monkey after recovering his missing phone. The footage shared on social media show a monkey staring at the camera before attempting to put in its mouth as well as photographs appearing taken by the primate. The man tells Reuters that he finds the images and video on his phone camera reel a day after it's missing. After retrieving his phone on his back garden, he discovers the images which caused him to choke a little and laugh. United Nations says Myanmar casualties may amount to further war crimes. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Chief Michel Bachelet says that civilian casualties from fighting in Rakhine and neighboring China states had been increasing, including through disappearances and extrajudicial killings. Therefore, may amount to further war crimes three years after an exodus of Rohingya Muslims from Myanmar, no concrete measures. Currently, people from the Rakhine, Chin, Moro, Danyet and Rohingya communities are increasingly affected by the armed conflict in Rakhine and Chin states, including through disappearances and extrajudicial killings of by civilians, massive civilian displacement, arbitrary arrest, torture and death in custody, and the destruction of civilian property. Civilian casualties have also been increasing. In some cases, they appear to have been targeted or attacked indiscriminately, which may constitute further war crimes or even crimes against humanity. It is troubling that a number of satellite images and eyewitness accounts indicate that areas in northern Rakhine have been burned in recent months. According to the United Nations, more than 730,000 Rohingya Muslims fled the western Rakhine state in 2017 following a military crackdown and 10,000 of people displaced and dozens killed. The situation of many hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees and internally displaced people remains unresolved. In 2019, the fact-finding mission in Myanmar concluded that Myanmar incurred state responsibility under the prohibition against genocide and crimes against humanity, as well for other violations of international human rights law and international humanitarian law. <clears throat> this council and the General Assembly also emphasized the call for accountability, but regrettably, no concrete measures have been taken. National initiatives, including secretive and selective court marshals and the National Commission of Inquiry, have been inadequate and fallen short of international standards. Myanmar Ambassador to United Nations in Geneva, Kiao Moetun, says allegations of abuses are inaccurate and that Myanmar needed time and space to carry out democratic reforms. That's appropriate time and space should be given to surely succeed the goal and fruitfully complete the process. That accuracy of information is essential in making a right decision. It is not acceptable that unsubstantiated and unverified allegations found their ways to the report of the UN. It will impact negatively on the image of the country concerned and on the efforts of the country to resolve the issue. 
Therefore, we ask the OSHA Asia to rely on verified information. Fourth, the situation in Yakan is complex with deep historical roots and not easy to fathom. Myanmar's army and government consistently reject the accusations and says that military are responding to attacks by Rohingya insurgents. The army denied targeting civilians and declared the Arakan army as a terrorist organization. The Philippines departs United States Marine who killed transgender women. The Philippines deports a United States Marine convict of killing a transgender woman in the Southeast Asian country in 2014 after he received an absolute pardon by President Rodrigo Duterte. According to the Philippine Bureau of Immigration spokeswoman Dana Sandoval, Lane's Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton left Manila's International Airport aboard an American military aircraft bound for the United States. A court have found Pemberton guilty of killing Jennifer Lode in a hotel in Olangapo, in northwest of the capital Manila, six years ago, over the United States military presence in its former colony. Presidential spokesman Harry Rocky, who serves as a lawyer in the prosecution of Pemberton, says Duterte's decision may have stemmed from his desire to get access to coronavirus vaccine being developed by United States. However, the Philippine Health Ministry says that none of the United States vaccine makers the government is in talks with had set any condition. Chinese president encourages children to grow into pillars of Chinese nation. The state chief, Xi Jinping, encourages children to grow into pillars of the nation during its inspection to central China's Hunan province. Your school is located at the site where the story of the halved killed occurred, and you have been learning about stories of the Long March heroes. I'm gratified about that. Our revolutionary cause and our path will be passed from generation to generation. I think your generation will realize our national rejuvenation. Now you're like saplings, and we take care of you and protect you from wind and rain. But you will eventually grow into towering trees in the future and form a forest of talents for the Chinese nation. Oh, Xi Jinping also encourages children to study hard and make progress every day. In 1934, Xu Jie a country woman who lives in the Saizhou village of Ruchen County, shared her bed with three young female Red Army soldiers during the Long March. Xu always tells her children and grandchildren that the Communist Party, a group of people who will cut the only quilt they had in half and give it to those who in need. Artificial intelligent robots serves customers at Seoul restaurant amid coronavirus restrictions. An Italian-themed restaurant in Seoul is now promising the safe delivery of food to tables, keeping in line with coronavirus-proof social distancing measures not done by humans but by robots. As social distancing has been strengthened in daily life, we decided to develop a serving robot based on Katie's self-driving solution. This robot allows us to provide non-face-to-face -face interactions between customers and staff. The artificial intelligence robot is equipped with food trays which can carry up to 30 kilograms and an LCD screen and speaker that communicate in both Korean and English. Since yesterday, social distancing rules have been eased and the number of customers has increased a little. Customers found the serving robot quite unique and interesting and also felt safe from the coronavirus. They could enjoy their meal and be in a pleasant mood. According to a restaurant staff, Made for Garlic has two of the same trolley-like robots, but it is only using one for the moment. Katie says they aim to supply more robots for restaurants this year and will unveil a second model with an artificial intelligence. Restaurants and cafes in the densely populated Seoul metropolitan area are allowed to open after 9 p.m. but must lift two meters between tables and record patrons' names and contact details. We hope you enjoyed the news for today. Have a nice day.